Hey, seventh grade. So our learning target for today is I can simplify expressions with negatives and exponents. We should be on page 29. Page 29. Everybody should be there. All right. So what we're talking about today is order of operations, really. But what we're going to add to the mix of the order of operations is some powers or exponents and some negatives. So a little bit different than what you've been doing in fifth and sixth grade. So we have some definitions over here. We have the definition of base and exponent. So we're going to get them in the mix over here. So the exponent tells you how many times to multiply the base. Go ahead and fill those in. Okay, so let's talk about those words. So we have this word base, this word exponent. So this is my base, and this here is my exponent. So what we're seeing is the four, we have the four is telling me how many of those I need. I need four, so I leave myself, I, the way I teach it is you have to leave for yourself four blanks. I need four of the number three. So three times three times three times three. Well, now what this is called is expanded notation. And what we're going to do then is we're going to solve that. So that's 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. This is called standard form, which is 81. So we have what's called, let's break through this. We have exponential form. We have expansion or showing your work there. And then we have what's called standard form. So I'd like you to throw, show me all three forms in our work today. Okay, moving on here. So we have 2 to the 4th power, which means I need four of those. 1, 2, 3, 4. What do I want four of? The number 2. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Everybody should be writing. So I need four of the number two, two times two times two times two. And when we solve that, then we end up with an answer of 16. Everybody should have 16 there. Okay, so let's give these next five a shot. So we have three to the second power, which means I need two of those. So I need one, two of those. What number do I have? It's three times three, which gives me an answer of nine. Three times three, which is equal to nine. That's example number one. Let's take a look at example number two. Now, if I'm going too fast, you should pause the video. Or if you have a sub today, you should very politely ask if the sub will pause the video for you. Three to the third power means I need three of those. One, two, three. Now, this one's a little bit trickier because the base and the exponent have, happen to be the same number. So that's three times three times three, which gives us an answer of three times three times three, which is equal to 27. Go ahead and take a look at that. Box in your answer. Make sure you're good to go on example number two. Okay, seventh grade, let's take a look at example number three. Example number three says 10 to the fourth power, which means I need four of that thing. One, two, three, four. Every time in my class, you have to leave those blanks. I have 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. So 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 is equal to 10,000. All right, moving on now. So moving on to example four, I need four of those. One, two, three, four. What number do I need four of? The number five. So five times five times five times five. Five times five times five times five gives us 625. Go ahead and take a look at that. 625 should be your answer there. Okay, so now here comes a really tricky one. Seven to the zero power. I need zero of those. So how many blanks do I leave? Well, no blanks. So this is a really kind of a complicated answer. This actually is the answer, the whole number one, because anytime you have anything to the zero power, the answer is just equal to one. Anything to the zero power is equal to giant number one. Okay, so let's move on. We're going to do order of operations now. We're going to hit the same work that we've been doing with exponents. We're going to have order of operations with exponents and negatives. Now, you cannot use your calculator for this work, so you're going to have to do things like money in the bank, stop, chop, chop, triangle problems, all that stuff that we've been working on the last couple days. So the first step is to do the parentheses first. Everybody should be doing parentheses. You can go ahead and put that symbol if that's easier than writing out the word parentheses. Then you're going to do exponents next. 
We just practice exponents. Those Remember, those are the powers. We just practice on how do we find those without a calculator. Then multiplication and division kick in. And they are tied from left to right. Go ahead and write. Everybody should be writing. Multiplication and division are tied from left to right. Okay. Next and last piece is add or subtract. They are also tied from left to right. Add, subtract. Okay, seventh grade. So let's give it a shot. So we have the order of operations down here. We have just powers in there. Um, let's go ahead and before we start, let's write out the order of operations. Please excuse my dear aunt Sally. I want everybody to write this out during our classwork. Please excuse my dear aunt Sally. S Sally. Now notice, I put multiplication and division next to each other because they are tied left to right. Addition and subtraction are tied. There isn't a, a distinguished winner there until you've actually looked at the problem to see which occurs on the left. Starting with parentheses, we don't have any parentheses in this problem, so we're going to go ahead and move on to the exponent. Exponent means I need two of those, so that's one, two. What number is in the blank? Three times three. Well, three times three has a name of nine. If I haven't used it, drag it down. So I have nine plus five squared. Now I'm still in the exponent category because I still have this five squared. So I'm going to do that next, five to the second power. That means I need, that means I need two of those, one, two. What number do I need two of? Five times five. So I end up saying, if I haven't used it, drag it down, and 5 times 5 is 25. So I have 9 plus 25, just good old addition, is 34, positive 34. No negatives in there to worry about, just money in the bank. Okay, guys, let's look at this next example. There's a whole bunch going on in this next example. Before we even start the problem, let's go ahead and write down, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Again, multiplication and division are tied, as well as addition and subtraction are tied. Okay, so step one is to do the parenthesis first. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of this parenthesis. 3 subtract 8 is my first step. So 3 subtract 8, I said, no, we do not subtract in Ms. Volkman's class. So we stop, chop, chop inside that parenthesis. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start working through that parenthesis right now. That's $3 in the bank. I have to take 8 out. Can I take 8 out of a bank that only has 3 in it? The answer is no. They still would be negative 5. Now notice I'm going to leave a parenthesis around that due to the fact that there is a negative there. We want to protect that negative. And then we're going to use the skill of if I haven't used it, I drag it down. Why do I do this? Because I want to be very careful that I don't make any silly mistakes. Now, as I start to work through, the parentheses are gone. Well, there is a parenthesis around that negative 5, but it does not have to be there. So I'm going to move on. Exponent is next. Exponent is I need two of these. 1, 2, which becomes negative 5 times negative 5. Triangle problem. So we have negative 5 times negative 5. That's a triangle problem over here. Here's my triangle problem. So I have a negative on the first 5. A negative on the second 5 means my answer is positive 25. If I haven't used it, drag it down for everything else. Okay. So exponents are gone. Multiplication and division are next. They are tied left to right. So as I look at the problem, I have both. I have multiplication or division there, and I have a multiplication sign there. I'm actually going to work this problem from left to right. So I'm going to do the left division because it's tied with multiplication. It shows up on the left. 6 goes into 24 four times. If I haven't used it, drag it down. So my final answer is just 4 times 25, which is 100. No negatives in there to worry about. It's just positive 100. Okay, guys, let's write order of operations out one more time. So we have, please, excuse, my dear Aunt Sally. Reminder, those are tied, and these are tied. Parenthesis first. In the parenthesis, we have 6 minus 10. Start to start us off, left to right. I said, no, we do not subtract in Ms. Volkman's class, so we're going to stop, chop, chop. That means I have $6 in the bank, and I'm trying to take 10 out of a bank that has 6 in it. Your answer then would be negative 4. All right. If I haven't used it, drag it down. If I haven't used it, drag it down. If I haven't used it, drag it down. So I'm going to drag everything else down so I don't make any mistakes. Here we go. 
All right, we are done with those parentheses. Now, we still see two parentheses in the problem, but they both just have one number inside, so there isn't anything for us to do there. So we're going to move on to the exponent. We have this exponent of this power at the very end here, 4 to the second power. Just a reminder, what the power is saying is I need two of those. So that's boom, boom, 4 times 4, which is 16. So that's going to be called 16. And then if I haven't used it, drag it down. If I haven't used it, drag it down the rest of the way. This is a subtraction sign there. Okay, so power is gone. Awesome. Multiplication, division are next. I have multiplication in the problem, but I don't see any division. So I'm going to do the multiplication right here next. Now remember, that is a triangle problem. So here's my triangle. I have a negative 9. I have a negative 3. So my sign is positive 27. This becomes a positive 27. If I haven't used it, drag it down. If I haven't used it, drag it down. If I haven't used it, Drag it down. Go ahead and catch up if I'm going too fast. All right, so multiplication, division are done. Addition, subtraction, working left to right. So I'm going to start with the addition here. On the left, we have negative 4 plus 27, which is a bank problem. My situation is this. I have to pay or I owe $4. I have $27 in the bank. Can I take 4 out of the bank? Yeah. Will there be any money left? Yes, $23. If I haven't used it, drag it down. If I haven't used it, drag it down. Now, because I've taught you to chop everything, I'd like you to chop this, even though some of your parents might be like, what is she talking about? But we're going to go ahead and chop all subtraction just to get in the habit of it. So I have $23 in the bank. I'm trying to take 10 out. Can I 10, take 10 out of a bank that has 23 in it? Yes. Is there anything less, left? Yes, $13. If I haven't used it, drag it down. If I haven't used it, drag it down. Leaves us with 29. Answer should be positive 29 for that problem. Okay, guys, so finally, our summary then, just remember that, I'll put this way down here just because of space, remember that multiplication and division are tied, and that addition and subtraction are tied. Please be very careful about that so you don't make any mistakes. Okay, so for tonight, order of operations with negatives and powers, your homework then is to do page 30 and 31, due tomorrow, page 30, 31. Have a fabulous night, 7th.